moments away from action here in St. John's Stadium. Caitlin Beasley Poco settles in, ready to offer the first pitch. There it is. It's right down the middle, taken for a strike. Beasley Poco, through 54 and two thirds innings pitched this year, has a 4.35 ERA. She offers that second pitch, taken for a ball to level up the count. She's given up 59 hits, 34 earned runs, but has 44 strikeouts. She's a workhorse for the Shants. They're going to need her to be active early. She deals the 1-1 for a ball. That's going to bring the count to 2-1. Beasley Poco offers the 2-1. That's low and outside. That's going to bring the count to 3-1. Dalton trying to work a walk here early, get things going for the Cajuns. And key for them will be to get after Beasley Poco early. Don't let her settle in and get comfortable on the mound. Shots are going to try to take away the long ball for the Cajuns, though. They've hit the second most home runs in the Sun Belt Conference, behind only Coastal themselves. As that pitch is high, and that's going to be ball four. Beasley Poco records her first walk of the afternoon. That brings Caitlin Aldering, the senior second baseman, to the plate. She's hitting 333 on the year through 60 at bat. She's managed to score 14 runs, record 20 hits, has six ribbies. Beasley Poco offers the first pitch to her. And that's taken for ball number one. As I was starting to say, the Shants are going to want to force the Cajuns to play small ball. The strength of this Clear defense is their fielding capability. As the 1-0 pitch is offered, chopped over the third baseman to the left fielder, Peyton Rivas, for a single. So with no outs here in the top of the first, the Cajuns active early with runners on first and second. As junior center fielder, Raina O'Neill comes to the plate. She's hitting 3-8 so far this year. Through 66 at bat, she has 11 runs, 21 hits, 10 RBIs. BZ Poco winds up, delivers. That one's taken for ball one. Beasley Poco offers the 1-0, and that's high for ball two. And the 2-0 pitch is a strike. It's going to bring the count to 2-1. and one. O'Neill had two RBIs yesterday in the Cajuns 5 to nothing victory over the Shawna Clears. She does have a runner in scoring position so far. It's Beasley Poco winds up for the 2-1. That one is also high, and that's going to be ball number three. The 3-1 pitch is in, and that's chopped foul right over my head. It's going to roll around on the roof, maybe find its way eventually down into the coastal dugout below me, and bring the count to 3-2. A little bit warmer today. Most of the weekend has been very cool, but we will certainly take it over the rain that came all last week as the 3-2 pitch is in. And that's chopped towards third, caught. And 
and that's gonna be out number one. Allison Cryer, great job getting getting the jump on that one. That's gonna bring designated player Bailey Curry to the plate for the Cajuns. Junior's hitting 196, through 46 at bats, five runs, nine hits, and 11 RBIs. Beasley Polko winds up. That first one's low, called for a ball. This is a dream start for the Cajuns, though. Force Beasley Polko to operate with runners in scoring position early. As that 1-0 pitch is also low for ball two. Cajuns trying their hardest to not allow Beasley Polko to settle in, get comfortable early in this game. Forcing her to throw a lot of pitches early. She winds up, delivers the 2-0. That's also taken low for ball three. And Bailey Curley trying to work a walk, load him up. I would imagine the bat will stay on Curry's shoulders here. As the 3-0 pitch is offered. And stay on, it, on her shoulder it does, but she takes it for strike one. And Beasley Poco trying to battle her way back into this at bat. Checks her armband, winds up, delivers. That's low for ball four, and that will indeed load the bases up with one out here in the top of the first. And it'll send senior catcher Julie Rawls to the plate for the Cajuns. She's hitting 292 to 48 at bats, has 12 runs, 14 hits, and 14 RBIs. She takes that first one for a ball. One-oh pitches in. Right down the middle, taken for strike one. That's gonna level up the count. One-one pitch is offered. Foul back. Brings the count to one and two. Julie Rawls, one for three yesterday with one RBI in that five-nothing victory. She prepares to take the one-two pitch from Beasley Poco, who winds up and delivers it. That's hit towards left field, it's back. And it is just foul. And so everybody will settle back into their respective positions. The count will stay at one and two. And Rawl stays alive to take at least one more pitch. Beasley Polko winds up, delivers. That's high for a ball. Four, and that is going to send a run in. So it's now one nothing for the Cajuns as senior left fielder Sarah Hudek takes the plate for the Cajuns. She's hitting 290 through 62 at bats. Scored eight runs, has 18 hits and 10 RBIs. Pitching coach will come out and have a word with Beasley Poco. Just try to settle her down. Struggling to find the zone early here. She's got herself in a bit of a jam here. Only one out. 
Already given up one. Base is loaded. If she could find a way out of this inning, that would be massive. We do have a pinch runner for the Cajuns. We'll try to get you that name and number in a moment. Beasley Polko winds up, delivers. High taken for a ball by Hudek. The 1 0 -oh pitch is offered. Taken right down the middle for strike one, level up the count. That pitch is high, taken for ball two. Easy Polko winds up, offers the 2-1. Swung at and missed. That's going to level up the count. The 2-2 pitch is in. And that's hit hard straight up the middle. Staviagra will grab it in center. Throw to home is not in time. Gets away from catcher McKenzie Byer. That's going to allow two to score for the Cajuns. It's going to leave runners on second and third as well. Here with one out in the top of the first. Brings first baseman, junior, Kerry Boswell to the plate. She's hitting 286 through 28 at bats, two runs, eight hits, and four ribbies. Beasley Poco winds up, delivers the first pitch to her. Right down the middle, taken looking for strike one. Again, still two runners on scoring position. One out. Beasley Poco got herself in a jam early, trying to find a way out of it. She winds up, delivers the 0-1. That's low for ball one. Beasley Poco gets the call from the dugout, checks her armband, winds up, delivers. Right down the middle, taken looking again for strike two. One, two pitches in. That's hit towards left center field. Auger and Rivas both go after it. Unable to make the catch as Rivas. Auger picks it up, gets the throw into second. That's going to allow both runners to score from second and third. It will be a double for Boswell. Off the wall. So moments after Sarah Hudek. Gets a couple ribbies with a double. Kerry Boswell does the same. And it is 5-0 here in the top of the first for the Cajuns. Still with one out as Beasley Poco delivers the first pitch. Right down the middle taken looking for a strike by sophomore third baseman Brittany Holland. She's hitting 429 on the year. Small sample size, seven at bats, but she does have a run scored, three hits, and an RBI. Excuse me, four RBIs and a home run. That pitch is taken. Levels up the count at one ball and one strike. Easy Poco offers the 1-1. One, one. 
That's taken for ball two. The 2 1 pitch is in. That's inside for ball three. And Beasley Poco winds up, delivers the 3 1. That's hit towards shallow right. Kaya Thomas able to make the catch. Runner checks at second, goes to third, is safe at third. And that's going to bring sophomore right fielder Kendall Talley to the plate, hitting 324 on the year through 37 at bats. She has seven runs, 12 hits. She's got a home run and eight RBIs. She finds herself with two outs and a runner in scoring position as she chops that one. And that's going to get through Taylor Swagger at second base. It's a single, and it allows yet another run to score. And that brings the top of the order back up for the Cajuns. Alyssa Dalton, who walked earlier this inning. And it's 6 0 for the Cajuns. And Ali Marcano coming in early. And Beasley Poco's afternoon has been a short one. Struggled to find the zone early. The Cajuns were aggressive early. Marcano will come in to try to get this final out, get the shots out of this inning. And see what the bats can do in the bottom of the first. Marcano. Comes into the game with a 1.88 ERA. 11, appearance, 11 appearances. 22 and a third innings pitched. She's given up 10 hits, 6 earned runs, but has 29 strikeouts. The senior left-hander throws a couple warm-up pitches. Gets the final message from her pitching coach. As we prepare to settle back in for what has been a rather explosive start for the Cajuns to this game. And we've got Marcano, the left-hander, settling again in against Dalton, the left-hander, who fouls that one back. Brings the count to 0-1. Marcano offers the 0-1. That's hit. That's lined out to Taylor Swagger at second base. That's going to wrap up. An eventful top of the first inning. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for the bottom of the first in just a moment.
Welcome back to St. John Stadium for the bottom of the first. An eventful top. The Cajuns able to score six. Leading things off for the shots will be Micaiah Thomas, followed by center fielder Stavi Auger, then Abby Montoya. The designated player Courtney Dean will get the cleanup duties as Kaya Thomas takes that first pitch looking for a strike from right-handed pitcher, senior Megan Kleist. Taylor Swaggart will hit sixth for the shots, followed by Mackenzie Beyer and Allison Cryer. And left fielder Peyton Rivas will round out the lineup as the 0-1 pitch is in, fouled off to the back by Kaya Thomas. Brings the count to 0-2. Megan Kleist, as I said, senior right-handed pitcher, has a 2.68 ERA, 5-5. Five and five. Through 62 and two-thirds innings pitched, she's given up 47 hits, 24 earned runs, has 59 strikeouts. She winds up, delivers the 0-2. That's taken for ball one by Kaya Thomas. Rounding out the Cajun defense, Julie Rawls holds down the catching duties. Gary Boswell is over at first. Caitlin Alderink at second. Alyssa Dalton at short. And Brittany Holland at third. One, two pitches in. And that's fouled off and back by Kai Thomas, who stays alive. Sarah Hudek holds down left field. Rena O'Neill out in center. And Kendall Talley hanging out over in right field. Kaya Thomas, the junior, hitting 460 on the year through 50 at bats, has 11 runs, 23 hits, and 12 RBIs. As that pitch is taken for ball two to level up the count. And Thomas trying to battle her way back into this at bat. And two two pitches in. That's going to miss outside for ball three, and that's going to bring up a full count. Kai Thomas in D has fought her way back into the at-bat. The 3-2 pitch is in, hit towards short. The throw is in time for out number one. It's going to bring up junior Stavi Auger, hitting 350 on the year through 57 at bats, 12 runs, 20 hits, and 21 RBIs. That's tied for second best in the Sun Belt Conference early this year. The first pitch is offered to her. Taken down the middle for strike number one. Kleist winds up, delivers the 0-1. High for ball one to level up the count. That's fouled off by Auger. Bring the count to one and two. That one fouled off back into the left. Kleist winds up, delivers. Auger tries to check the swing, unsuccessful. So she's going to go down on strikes for out number two. That brings the sophomore shortstop, Abby Montoya, to the plate, hitting 367 through 49 at bats. That's 12 runs, 18 hits, and 16 ribbies of her own. Also has five home runs on the year. So first pitch to her, she hit, grounds out to shortstop, and that's going to do it here in the bottom of the first. One, two, three inning for the Cajuns. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few moments for the top of the second. 
Best Golf Cars is the Low Country's longest standing club car dealer since 1988. We hold the prestigious status of being a black and gold dealer, which means we've excelled in meeting club cars' high standards of product placement and customer care. We offer the best sales investment programs and warranties in the business, and our off site service plans will help keep your car running for years. When you're shopping for your golf car, make Best Golf Cars your first and last stop. Visit our website at bestgolfcars.com, call us at 843-448-7775, or visit one of our showrooms. Remember, Best isn't just a name, it's the difference. Welcome back to St. John's Stadium for the top of the second inning here. The Cajuns with a first inning full of fireworks. Scored six. Caitlin Beasley Poco did get the start for the shots. Pulled two thirds of the way through the inning. Senior relief pitcher Ali Marcano on the mound now for Coastal. She faces. Second baseman, Caitlin Aldrink again. Aldrink singled in her first at bat. Fouls off that attempted drag bunt for strike one. And that is characteristic of this Cajun team. Not a lot of extra base hits normally bit of a small ball team as is Coastal but both hit their fair share of home runs as I mentioned earlier Coastal with 23 home runs on the year that is first in the Sunbelt Conference Cajuns are second with 20 so both teams very balanced but primarily rely on small ball as that pitch is taken for ball one Pitch is in, that's hit towards right center field. Auger and Thomas both head over, but ultimately Auger will be the one that finds a way underneath that one for the second out of the inning. First pitch is in for a ball on Taylor Roman, the freshman. Pinch hitting. It's a swing and a miss. Level off the count at one and one. One one pitches in. High for ball two. The two one pitches in, swung at and missed. Levels up the count at two and two. Roman out in front of that one. Roman hitting 234 on the year. Eight runs, one home run, and four RBIs as Marcano deals the 2 2 pitch to her. That's low and inside for ball three. That's going to bring up a full count. Marcano winds up, delivers. And that's fouled off straight back by Roman. She's going to stay alive and see at least one more pitch. Go, 
Marcano winds up, deals. Swung at and missed for out three. Quick one, two, three inning for the shots. Just what they needed from Marcano. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back for the bottom of the second in just a few moments. Welcome back for the bottom of the second here at St. John's Stadium. It will be four, five, six up for the shots. Designated player Courtney Dean, followed by first baseman Sidney Guess and second baseman Taylor Swagart. Shots looking to get something going here against Megan Kleist, who looks sharp in the bottom of the first. So that first pitch is hit towards shortstop by Dean. Throw is in time. That's a quick quick out for the Cajuns. Alyssa Dalton getting a lot of activity over at shortstop early. That is her third ground out play as the first pitch is in on Guess. Taken for ball one. Guess the sophomore hitting 323 through 31 at bats, has nine runs, 10 hits, two home runs, and 10 ribbies. The 1 0 pitch to her is fouled off back and to the right. And levels up the count. Kleist winds up, delivers the 1-1. One, one. That's popped up towards shallow right. Second base and right field both to get it, but ultimately right fielder Kendall Talley makes the play for out number two. And so Taylor Swigart will come to the plate for the shots with nobody on and two outs. Junior's hitting 236 through 55 at bat. She has eight runs, 13 hits, three home runs, and nine ribbies. Takes that first pitch for a strike. The bat stays on the shoulder. Kleist winds up, offers the 0-1. That's fouled off towards the coastal dugout. It's going to bring the count to 0-2. Swaggart, a little early on that one, out in front of it. He yanked it down the third baseline. As Kleist looks for another 1-2-3 inning for the Cajuns, one pitch away. Winds up, delivers. And that's chopped towards second base. Throw is in time, and it is indeed a 1-2-3 inning for the Cajuns again to wrap up the bottom of the second. We'll be back with the top of the third in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Sparks Toyota is all about providing exceptional value and savings to our customers. That's why, with every new or used Toyota, you become a Sparks preferred customer. With our Sparks customer program, you'll receive an additional year of service on new and used vehicles, plus Toyota care maintenance, complimentary shuttle service, a full tank of gas at purchase, and more. The preferred customer program can save you thousands. For more details, click SparksToyota.com and come see us today at Sparks Toyota, where the dealer is always in. Carolina people, 
Carolina Food, Carolina Events, Carolina Issues, MyCarolinaLife.com, a place where we write about what matters to you, an uplifting collection of your stories, recipes and nutrition tips, wellness trends for our region, all focused around better health. MyCarolinaLife.com, powered by Tideland's Health. Welcome back to St. John Stadium for the top of the third here. Cajuns up 6-0 after a big first inning. And four hits. Marcano on the mound for the shots. Able to come in, record the third out in the first inning. and Nice, efficient second inning. One, two, three. Just what the shots needed. They'll need a, another one of them right here until they can get the bats going on the other side. It will be five, six, seven up for the Cajuns. Catcher Julie Rawls will be first. Has an RBI today. Takes that first pitch for a ball. Ali Marcano winds up, delivers the 1 0. Taken right down the middle looking for strike number one. The 1 1 pitch is offered. Taken low for ball two. Connell winds up, delivers. It's taken for ball three. And so Julie Rawls trying to start the inning off, working a walk. Marcano winds up, delivers a 3 1. High for ball four, and that will indeed walk Rawls. And put a runner on first for left fielder Sarah Hudak. Hudak with a, a double up the middle earlier for two RBIs. Takes the first pitch low for ball one. That pitch is fouled off towards the coastal dugout, dugout off the end of the bat. Level up the count at one and one. Louisiana base running coach with a smooth snag with the ball cap there. Marcano checks her armband, winds up, delivers the one one. Low for ball two. Connell winds up, deals. That one is hit hard towards right field. No doubt that one is gone. That's a two-run shot from Hudek. That one was a bomb. And that's going to extend the Cajun lead to 8 to nothing here in the top of the third. Found the center of the barrel of the bat with that one. Blew by the flag post out there in right center field, and no doubt from the start. And Kerry Boswell at the plate now for the Cajuns. One for one with two RBIs as well. Takes that first pitch for a ball. 
Boswell doubled in the top of the first. Marcano winds up, delivers the 1-0. Low and in the dirt for ball two. If you're the Cajuns, this is exactly what you were looking for. You never gave the coastal pitchers an opportunity to settle in. As Marcano delivers the 2-0. Taken for ball three. They've been uncomfortable from the start. They've had to operate with runners in scoring position most of this game. Marcano trying to find a way back into this at bat. Delivers the 3-0. Taken looking for strike one, no surprise there. As Boswell just trying to work a walk and get on base. Marcano winds up, fires it in. Right down the middle for strike two. So that's gonna bring up a full count. Now Boswell got to settle back into this at bat and maybe take a swing at something if it if it looks all right here. Marcano delivers the 3-2 and Boswell does get wood on it. That's chopped over into shallow right. Kaya Thomas able to make the catch easily. Only had to come in a couple steps. And that's the first out. Brittany Holland, the sophomore. Up to bat for the Cajuns now. Had a fly out to right field earlier in the first inning. Takes that first pitch for a ball. The 1 0 pitch is taken right down the middle looking for strike one. Levels up the count. Marcano with a glance at the armband winds up, delivers the 1 1. That's fouled off straight back. Holland out in front of that one in a little bit. Pitch was high anyway, about shoulder height. Knew as soon as she. Swung that she probably should have laid off that one. Marcano ahead in this count, one and two, delivers that one, and that's yanked foul towards the third base dugout. And so she'll stay alive for at least one more pitch. Marcano winds up. That was taken for ball two. And two two pitches in. That's pulled down the third base line. Foul from the start. And so we will settle back in. Pitcher and batter both to the respective positions, and we'll do it all again. Marcano gets the call from the dugout, checks her armband for this 2-2 pitch, delivers. Swung at and missed. It's going to be another strikeout for Marcano, second of the day. That's going to bring up the bottom of the order for the Cajuns, right fielder Kendall Talley. Tally with a single for an RBI in the first inning. Takes his first pitch for a strike on the run up. Bunt attempt. Marcano winds up, delivers. That's taken for ball one by Tally, so that's gonna level up the count at one apiece. Again, two outs here, 
top of the third. Marcano winds up. Swung at and missed by Tally. Marcano with a great looking pitch there. Gets ahead in this count, one and two. One pitch away from getting out of this inning. Checks the dugout, checks her armband. Winds up, there it is. That's high for ball two. Two two pitches in. That's hit hard up the middle. Auger will grab it. Will be a single for Tally. That brings the top of the order back around for the Cajuns. Alyssa Dalton. She has a walk and a line out to second so far in the day. Marcano delivers the first pitch to her. High for ball one. There's the 1-0 pitch. Taken looking for strike one. Marcano just trying to find a way out of this inning. Did give up, give up the two-run shot a couple of at-bats ago. But with a, with a runner on first, just have to find a way out of this situation here as that pitch is taken for ball two. Give your team an opportunity on the other side of the plate to try to get something going in the bottom of the third without giving up any more damage. It is an 8-0 lead for the Cajuns. As the 2 1 pitch is delivered, swung at and missed. Fouled off, excuse me. Fouled off straight back. Levels up the count at 2 and 2. And Marcano is one pitch away from, in fact, getting out of the inning. Winds up, delivers the 2 2. Inside for ball three. It's going to bring up a full count. Three two pitches in. And that's hit hard down the first baseline. It is fair. That's going to score at least one. Dalton rounds second, heads to third. Swagger holds it. Will be a triple for Dalton. Caitlin Aldrink. Aldrink, excuse me, at the plate for the Cajuns now with a runner on third, 9 nothing lead for Louisiana. Marcano operating on two outs. Just trying to find a way to get that third one as that pitch is hit hard right up the middle. That will score one. Auger picks it up. That is a single RBI for Caitlin Aldrink. The bats stay red hot for the Cajuns. So Raina O'Neill will bat next for the Cajuns. It looks as though we will have another pitching change for the shots. I will get you that name and it will be the freshman Rayleigh Brabham. In to relieve Marcano. 
Brabham with a 2.13 ERA, 6-2 and two record in 11 appearances, 42 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's given up 38 hits, 23 runs, only 13 earned. Has 46 strikeouts in that 42 and two-thirds innings pitched. Comes in with a runner on base, two outs. against Raina O'Neill. What a line out in the first. Is 0 for 2 on the day. And Brabham settles in. as does O'Neill. Brabham with a last glance at the armband, winds up, delivers the first pitch to O'Neill. That's low and outside for ball one. The 1-0 -oh pitch is in. Swung at and missed. Mighty swing from O'Neill. Unable to put any aluminum on it though, and so it will level up the count at one and one. And there is the one one pitch, fouled off straight back by O'Neill. And Brabham finds herself ahead in her first at bat. One two pitch is chopped back into the left foul. So Alderink will do a quick lap and head back to first. And O'Neill will settle back into the box, grab him back onto the mound. And we'll do the one two pitch all over again. And there it is. Low and in the dirt for ball two. Runner stays at first. Thought about it, but thought about going, but Byer able to stay in front of it, knock it down. So Aldering just stays put. Count two and two with two outs. Brabham winds up, delivers, low and outside for ball three to bring up a full count. Three two pitches in, and that's fouled off by O'Neill, who stays alive. Once again, Alderink will do a quick lap and head back to first. Brabham just looking for something she can slide by O'Neill and finish out this inning. The three two pitch is away, and that's hit hard towards first. Sydney Guess able to record the third out. Four more scored, though, for the Cajuns here. It is a 10-0 lead for Louisiana. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back for the bottom of the third in just a few moments.
Welcome back to St. John Stadium for the bottom of the third. It is a 10-0 lead for the Raging Cajuns. 7-8-9 due up for the Shants. Catcher Mackenzie Byer, followed by third baseman Allison Cryer, and left fielder Peyton Rivas. Byer, the sophomore, hitting 364 on the year. To 33 at bats, has eight runs, 12 hits, three home runs and nine RBIs. And that first one is grounded out for a quick first out. That brings up Allison Cryer. Sophomores hitting 167 on the year through six at bats, so a small sample size. Has managed to score five runs with one hit, three RBIs. Takes that first pitch for a strike. And the shots yet to put a runner on base. No other way to put it. It, it is a nightmare start for them this afternoon. That, as the 0-1 pitch is high for ball one to level up the count. There's still enough softball to play. If you can get something going here, but you do have to get something going here and start to fight your way back into this game one inch at a time. That one's taken outside for ball two. And here comes the two-one pitch. Right down the middle, taken looking for strike two. Levels up the count on Cryer. Kleist rocks back, winds up, and Cryer goes down swinging out in front of that one for out number two. And that brings Peyton Rivas to the plate for the shots, hitting 400 on the year through 40 at bats, has 11 runs, 16 hits, and three ribbies. And the first pitch on her is a swing and a miss for strike one. That Cryer strikeout was Kleist's stri second strikeout of the afternoon as she winds up, delivers the 0-1. Taken low for ball one on the run-up. Two outs, nobody on for Rivas. The 1-1 one, one pitch is in. Rivas shows bunt, takes that one looking for strike two. And Kleist is one pitch away from yet another 1-2-3 inning to start this game. She's been absolutely dealing so far as she delivers that one. That's taken looking for strike three. That will be the second strikeout of the inning. Third total. Nothing doing for the shots. Still 10 nothing. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back for the bottom of the third in just a few moments. Best Golf Cars is the Low Country's longest standing club car dealer since 1988. We hold the prestigious status of being a black and gold dealer, which means we've excelled in meeting Club Car's high standards of product placement and customer care. We offer the best sales investment programs and warranties in the business, and our off-site service plans will help keep your car running for years. When you're shopping for your golf car, make Best Golf Cars your first and last stop. Visit our website at bestgolfcars.com, call us at 843-448-7775, or visit one of our showrooms. Remember, Best isn't just a name, it's the difference. as we settle in for the top of the fourth here in St. John's Stadium. It is a 10-0 lead for the Raging Cajuns. Bats have been red hot. 
and we have seen all three primary pitchers for the shot so far. Rayleigh Brabham is in now on the mound for Coastal. Is the third of those three to be brought in. She will face Bailey Curry to lead things off for the Ragin' Cajuns. Julie Rawls and Sarah Hudak will follow. As we pause for a moment here as Looks like Mackenzie Beyer dealing with some equipment. She has a new helmet brought out to her. And Curry prepares to step into the box, Brabham onto the mound. And the first pitch is offered to Curry. And she takes that one right down the middle looking for strike one. Brabham winds up, delivers. That one in there down the middle taken looking as well for strike two. A little off speed there. Brabham checks her armband, prepares, and delivers the 0-2. And that's hit towards left field. Rivas back to the wall, catches it at the wall. Great play by Peyton Rivas for the first out of the inning. And so Julie Rawls at bat for the Cajuns. Couple walks this afternoon. That first pitch is taken for a ball. Does technically have a ribby on one of those walks. Brabham delivers the 1-0. High for ball two. And there's the 2-0 pitch, and that's hit hard towards right field. Rivas, excuse me, Thomas, Kaya Thomas, able to settle underneath that one. Barely had to move from the spot, and that's out number two. Sarah Hudek to the plate next for the Cajuns. Takes that first one for a ball. She has a double up the middle for two RBIs in the first and then followed that up with a two run bomb in the top of the fourth, excuse me, top of the third. Two of those four runs that were scored by the Cajuns. Takes that 1-0 pitch for a ball. Bring the count to 2-0. Brabham with a glance at the armband, winds up, delivers the 2-0. That's fouled off, back into the left. Bring the count to 2-1. and one. Brabham trying to battle her way back into this at bat. The 2-1 pitch is in. That's it, hard towards left field. Rivas back again near the wall at the warning track, able to nestle underneath that one, and that's going to do it. Quick one, two, three inning for the shots, exactly what they needed. We'll be back for the bottom of the fourth in just a few moments.
Welcome back for the bottom of the fourth here as the shots start back off at the top of the order. Kaya Thomas followed by Stav Yager and Abby Montoya. Again, 10 nothing lead for the Raging Cajuns. Coastal has to get something going here. First pitch is in on Thomas. Takes a mighty swing at that for strike one. Thomas grounded out to short in the first inning. It has been all one, two, three innings so far for the Cajuns. Kleist absolutely dealing on the mound has been quite menacing. Three strikeouts already on the afternoon. Ty Makaya Thomas shows bunt on that one, takes it for ball one. Level up the count at one apiece. The 1-1 one, one pitch is in. Low and outside for ball two. On an afternoon when everything is, everything that could go wrong has go wrong, gone wrong, all you can do is try your best to do the little things right and find a way to battle your way back into this game. As Thomas will record the first base hit for the shots. Little blooper that finds its way through third and short out in the left field. And Coastal has its first base runner of the afternoon. Stav Yager to the plate for the shots. Struck out in her first at bat in the first inning. Takes that first pitch right down the middle looking for a strike. Shantz finally showing a little bit of life with the bats though. Let's see if it can continue. The 0-1 pitch is in. Auger takes that one looking as well right down the middle for strike two. So Kleist after giving up her first hit of the afternoon comes right back at the next batter with two Ball's right down the middle, and Auger goes down swinging for the first out of the bottom of the fourth. That's Kleist's fourth strikeout of the afternoon. And Abby Montoya, the shortstop for the shots, comes to the plate now. She grounded out to short in the first. First pitch on her is in right down the middle, taken looking for a strike as well. And brings the count to 0-1. The 0-1 pitch is in. Off speed, but right down the middle, taking looking for strike two. And so in back-to-back -back at bats, Kleist jumps out to an early 0-2 lead. Frees her up to throw whatever she wants here. But Abby Montoya turns that one into left field and that's gonna be an error on the left fielder. Kaya Thomas able to make it to third. Abby Montoya, that is a, able to advance to second. So that should be a single with a E7 allowing Montoya to pick up the extra base. And designated player Courtney Dean comes to the plate for the shots with runners in scoring position for the first time this afternoon in St. John's Stadium. She grounded out to short in her first at bat. And she takes that first one low and inside for ball one. The shots showing a little bit of life here. And really all it takes is one player to get something going. Granted, you still have miles to go before you can claw your way back into this game, but you can't run a marathon until you take that first step. The 1-0 pitch is in and fouled back into the right by Dean. Levels up the count at 1-1. One and one.
Kleist for the first time operating with runners in threatening positions. Delivers that one right down the middle for strike two. Dean takes that one looking. Dean can just find a way to put something in play here. Gonna score at least one, probably two. Checks her swing. And takes it for ball two. Kleist winds up, delivers. And that one's gonna miss for ball three. That's gonna bring up a full count now with only one out, runners on second and third. Last thing Kleist wants to do is load them up here for Sydney Guest to come up. The three two pitch is hit the other way and that's gonna find its way over the second baseman into right field. It does allow Thomas to score. Montoya advances to third. It is an RBI single for Courtney Dean. The shots have runners on first and third with one out, and finally a one run on the board. And so Sidney Guess will step back to the plate. She flew out to right field earlier in the game. Pitching coach, infield, and catcher are going to have a little conference with Kleist on the mound. Who again to this point had been absolutely perfect. Three up, three down, three up, three down, three up, three down. Can't ask for anything more than that, but now the shot's threatening here. If they can find a way to grab at least two more and then not give anything up before the before the bottom of the fifth rolls around, then they will extend this game to the full seven, hopefully, and at least to six. Give themselves a chance to try to claw their way back in here. Sydney Guest with 10 RBIs on the year to date. Two home runs. Be a big moment for another one right here. Coach is all fired up for the Raging Cajuns. As we settle back in here though, finally get things sorted out. Coach quite animated despite having a 10 to one lead here. As that first pitch is top, chopped towards first, Cajuns trying to turn two, they will get, they will get the runner at second. But it does allow Abby Montoya to score. It's gonna make it 10-2 now. Gas able to advance the first on the fielder's choice. Will be an RBI single for Sydney Gas. Taylor Swagger comes to the plate for the shots. Takes that first pitch for a ball. And the 1-0 pitch is in. And that's hit hard towards short. And that will be scooped up and the base will be tagged for the third out. But the shots able to grab two here showing signs of life. In the bottom of the fourth, don't go anywhere. We'll be back for the top of the fifth in just a minute. Sparks Toyota is all about providing exceptional value and savings to our customers. That's why, with every newer used Toyota, you become a Sparks preferred customer. With our Sparks customer program, you'll receive an additional year of service on new and used vehicles, plus Toyota care maintenance, complimentary shuttle service, a full tank of gas at purchase, and more. The preferred customer program can save you thousands. For more details, click SparksToyota.com and come see us today at Sparks Toyota, where the dealer is always in. Carolina people, Carolina food, Carolina events.
Carolina issues. MyCarolinaLife.com, a place where we write about what matters to you. An uplifting collection of your stories, recipes and nutrition tips, wellness trends for our region, all focused around better health. MyCarolinaLife.com, powered by Tidelands Health. Welcome back to the top of the fifth. Sean's able to grab two in the bottom of the last inning. Got the lead to 10 to two. Seven, eight, nine, due up for the Cajuns here. It will be Gary Boswell, followed by Brittany Holland, and then Kendi Kendall T Talley. Riley Brabham, the freshman, brought in to relieve Marcano. Staying on the mound for the shots. Has looked steady so far. Clean top of the fourth. Going to look for that again here. Can't afford to give up anything else if you're coastal. As the first pitch is in. Taken looking for a strike by Kerry Boswell. Excuse me, that's going to be Gianna Torres pinch hitting for Boswell. And that's going to bring the count to one and one as that one's taken for a ball. Raging Cajuns coaching staff having a little bit of a conversation as we settle back in. Brabham delivers the 1-1. One, one. Right down the middle taken looking for strike two. One, two pitches in. Taken high for ball two. Like Torres. She's hitting 364 on the year through 11 at bats. Has four hits, one ribby. That one's delivered, chopped to third. Throw is in time. Quick 5 3 put out. from Allison Cryer for the first out of this inning. Brings up Brittany Holland. Flew out to right and then struck out. 0 for 2 on the afternoon. Fouls that first pitch off. Back and into the netting for strike one. And there's the 0-1 pitch. Taken for ball one, the level up the count at one apiece. Winds up, delivers, that's popped up. Foul territory near the dugout. Sydney Guess, not quite able to get underneath that one. Only about a step or two away from dropping down into the Cajuns dugout. Count is one and two. As Holland and Brabham both settle back into their respective positions. The one two pitch is lost on the wind up. That'll be ball two. <laughs> Don't see that one too often. Just got away from her on the wind up. Gives the dugout a little chug hole. Gets the call, checks her armband, winds up. There's the 2-2. Two -two. That's chopped straight back at her. Fielded cleanly. The throw is in time to guess over at first. And that's going to 
be out number two. So it looks like Courtney Gremion will pinch hit for Kendall Talley. Courtney Grimion, excuse me. Takes that first pitch looking down the middle for strike one. Grimion through 11 at bats as a .91 average. She takes that one for ball two. Excuse me, ball one. She does have two hits, two runs, one hit, one ribby. Again, a small sample size. So that pitch is taken for strike two, right down the middle. Thought about giving that one a go, but kept the bat on the shoulder. And Brabham, one pitch away from a clean one, two, three inning. Yet again. Winds up, delivers. That one's hit hard towards left field. Back to the track. Rivas will get it off the hop off the wall. It will be a double for Grimion. Top of the order, back up for the Cajuns, Alyssa Dalton. Once again. Takes that first pitch for a strike. All one pitch is high for ball one to level up the count on Dalton. Dalton got a little bit of everything going so far. Got a walk, a line out to second, and a triple for an RBI. As Brabham winds up, delivers the 1-1. One -one. That one's popped up towards Abby Montoya at short, who will grab that one for the third out. Still 10-2. Cajuns, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back for the bottom of the fifth in the Coastal at bat next. <laughs> 